Well, it's been a tumultuous week for a lot of Springfield City residents after a significant storm blew through with winds that were reminiscent of a hurricane, a derecho. Something that a lot of us haven't heard of before, but uh, when you have uh, winds blowing over trees and knocking over a substantial number of power poles and utility poles, people get a uh, lesson real quick in just how uh, devastating such a uh, storm can be. Uh, to get to the latest updates that we have for the city of Springfield, we're uh, joined by Springfield Mayor Misty Busher here on WMAY. Uh, Mayor, thanks for taking time. Uh, you've been in office for, what, two months? And uh, here you go with, uh, with a state of emergency in the city of Springfield. Field. What's the latest? Hi, Greg. Yes, uh, the fifth was my second month, uh, started my second month, <laughs> full month in office. Um, the state of the city is getting better and better each day uh, from the duratio, as you referenced, the uh, sort of like a, a land hurricane that we had, which is a phenomena, weather phenomena. Um, but it is something that took place. And as of this morning, less than 5% of our residents are still without power. Um, so we have more than tripled our crews from City Water, Light and Power to try to restore power as quickly as possible to our citizens. Um, but the citizens here in the Midwest and in Illinois, um, this is just something different and strange for them to even think about that you could have something that is reminiscent of a hurricane, but here in, in the middle of the, of the state where we are, you know, not surrounded by oceans, Greg. Yeah, you know, talk about, I guess, some of the, uh, the things that are uh, taking place out, outside of just the utility work, right? Because that's one thing. You've got crews uh, for city water, light, and power. You've got crews from outside of the area coming in, uh, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of bucket trucks out there. That's one thing. And they're working uh, judiciously to get the power back on. But what are some of the other things that you're finding residents are having a tough time dealing with uh, now that we're uh, a little over a week from uh, the storm impacting uh, the city of Springfield? Well, I believe that um, I think we would just touch on the uh, residents that are having a hard time keeping their devices charged because we all get our information, whether it be through a cell phone or an iPad or a laptop. So uh, charging stations become very, very important during this time. And then the second for them to get information for their safety. And then the, the big item is food and water as well. Uh, we are finding a, a big need of food and water. Uh, we do have residents who might be um, on link um, or, you know, a benefit plan such as that. And when their food uh, is spoiled or no longer able to be used, um, they were having a hard time finding food. So we have uh, resources through the American Red Cross. They have been a great, great asset to the city um, in helping feed those hungry and thirsty uh, citizens. We're talking with uh, Springfield Mayor Misty Busher here with Springfield's Morning News on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk, having a, a little bit of audio issue there. But, uh, uh, Mayor, uh, you know, this obviously is uh, new uh, for you being fresh in the office. Uh, this is like uh, learning on the fly. Uh, talk about some of the lessons that you're learning here during this time. So the night of the storms, uh, we went into the emergency operations center, which is in the lower level of the building I'm in. And it was all hands on deck, police, fire, public works, city water, light and power, and myself uh, down there just trying to figure out uh, what the extent of the damage was. And um, quite frankly, there was a, a antenna on top of um, the Wyndham Hotel, which is a communications antenna for us. And it went down with the storms. So our firefighters didn't have radios that were working properly. And it was just I hate to say it, but almost like the perfect storm where things just weren't working that we normally rely on for communication. So uh, we found ourselves uh, pulling two 911 dispatchers from the county building over into our EOC. They came over and started working immediately. Our IT department got them up and running downstairs so that we could communicate together. And um, we were literally using cell phones and writing on pins and paper all of the calls. So it was back to where things used to be. So. Um, it was um, amazing to watch how quickly our first responders all worked together and teamwork and made sure our citizens were taken care of. Um, the biggest blessing in all of this is that no one lost their life through that storm, Greg. And I want to point that out that we didn't have a fatality, and that's a huge deal. There were some questions yesterday about um, union conflicts or something to that effect, uh, possibly delaying some of the, the work to get out and be done. Uh, can you address that at all? I have not, as the mayor, witnessed any union creating conflict that we couldn't get any work done. Um, I personally called on Friday. The storms hit Thursday. 
Um, so I was out until I worked here at the city hall until about 10 30 on Thursday evening from the time of the storm till 10 30 at night. Then I went out and met the laborers disaster response team. They were out working very diligently that evening. I was with them till almost midnight at six in the morning. I was at our public works garage meeting our union employees who pick up the debris, just kind of briefing them on what we think we're going to see and what's going to happen and never. And then I came into the office and called the, the few unions that touch this kind of work, the business agents for those unions, and none of them ever said no one was ever going to work. They've never had any problems. So I don't know um, where that uh, theory or myth came from, but I certainly do not think that is the case. We're talking with Springfield Mayor Misty Busher here this morning, now a week and a day after the uh, powerful storms blew out uh, dozens and dozens of utility poles and uh, about uh, less than 5% of uh, City Water, Light and Power customers still without power this morning. Uh, and uh, what's the estimation of getting all of those uh, individuals fully restored uh, to have power for, for their homes? So I, I know that City Water, Light and Power has a goal as of this Sunday to have no more than a thousand customers without power still. And at that point, it's going to become almost individualized visits where we have to look at the home and see, is there an issue with getting power to the home? Um, right now, they're still repairing large, larger areas. Again, we're still with almost a little under 5% of our residents without power. So the larger areas, of course, get all the attention because if you can get the work done and put you know, 100 homes on the grid versus one or two, we're going to do that first. So that's what they're looking at. And then after Sunday, it's going to become more of those um, individual type visits that have to happen. Looking ahead, uh, I know the idea of burying uh, electric lines uh, has been floated before in the past, but what can we take from this instance to move forward into the future uh, to, to possibly prevent these types of situations from happening again when Mother Nature decides to come in with uh, with severe winds like this? So I was on the phone earlier this morning with um, a representative of a company that sells AMI readers, um, and I referenced those during the Tuesday night council meeting, which was just a few days after the storm. I'm sorry, it was a Wednesday night council meeting because Tuesday was 4th of July. I've uh, been in the office every day, so they are all the same, but Wednesday night council meeting. And uh, an AMI reader is an electronic meter that would immediately tell us if the individual unit, whether it's on a business or a home, was without power. And right now that doesn't happen. So uh, I was discussing with Doug Brown, our chief utility engineer, how quickly would we have had um, more response time to know what was going on if those readers were in place? I've been talking with someone. I want to put a packet together to get some information in the hands of our council members just to describe what they are and uh, what they do. Um, not necessarily a bid or anything like that, but just some information. We need to look at how we can use technology, Greg, in order to fastly and efficiently assess what's going on. Um, so that is something we will be looking at. Springfield Mayor Misty Busher with us. Um, so we've, of course, got a lot more uh, to do. Of course, public works are going to be out picking up more uh, branches and limbs and fallen trees. Um, but uh, when it comes to the the residents and their private property, uh, do you feel that there needs to be more education about what the city's responsibility is versus what the private property owner's responsibilities are when it comes to cleaning up after storms? That's a great question. And City Water, Light and Power does have a link on their webpage. If a, a resident wants to research and find out what is the resident's responsibility and what is the utility's responsibility, there is a, um, information on their page about that. And um, we do find that there are people calling into City Hall who maybe are underinsured or uninsured and do not have the ability to uh, pay for repairs and or they're disabled or handicapped or cannot physically get the debris out of their yard, so to speak. It may not be damaged, but just debris. Um, so we're asking that if people find they are underinsured or uninsured, they call um, our Office of Economic Development. Uh, Val Yazel, the um, director there, has been in touch with HUD, talking to them about our residents who maybe have some financial trouble getting that done. And then for those who cannot physically move the, remove the debris, uh, we currently have um, a disaster relief group in from the Illinois Baptist Disaster Relief Group, and they are here assessing properties to help and assist, and they do it volunteer work. Um, and their phone number, if a person is having trouble getting debris removed, is 217 
341-2416, and they will come out and assess and try to help you. And I imagine uh, the city's resources will also uh, help residents maybe find some um, uh, financial recompensation of uh, uh, food, for instance. We heard a little bit about uh, the, the, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program dollars that may be available for even those who aren't on SNAP to replace some of the food that they lost. Yes, and I want to promote, uh, as we're talking, one of our good, good partners and friends here at the community is the Springfield YMCA. Um, and the YMCA is doing a fresh produce box giveaway this Saturday, tomorrow, Greg, at 2 p.m. at their facility at 601 North 4th Street. It is first come, first serve. And then I was on the phone with the Y last night again, and they're reaching out trying to get more food. They've heard our need for food, and they want to assist and help. Um, and so they're going to be doing more than just what's going on this Saturday. But currently this Saturday, there will be fresh produce giveaways at the YMCA. And just two more things, and I'll let you go because I know you're busy with still a state of emergency uh, underway here, but uh, businesses uh, impact by this we heard a little bit about the hotels that were without power uh what are you hearing from the business community how have they been uh, faring with the uh with the storms so i did reach out to mike murphy um, at the chamber of commerce to ask him to start contacting all of the businesses for us uh with the city um in mind because we want to know uh especially as we're turning in all of our calculations of the loss that took place for with IEMA, and they will assist us in asking for federal relief. Um, we want to know what their loss is, whether it's a hotel. If you've traveled that Dirksen Parkway corridor from South Grand Avenue down to Stevenson, you will see there are many restaurants and hotels without power. The lines are still laying down. Um, and that is a fiscal impact that we need to know. So any business, if you would please reach out to the Springfield Chamber of Commerce, we've asked them to help us facilitate collecting that data. And again, I think you answered my uh, second question I had remaining, and that was whatever kind of federal assistance there may be uh, and how uh, you're working with other agencies across the states and other uh, jurisdictions to, to calculate the total cost from this storm. When do we anticipate that, uh, that, 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 that at least uh, you know, confirmation of totals and getting it to the federal government? When do you anticipate that possibly coming together? So confirmation of all of the totals clearly will take some time because not all the bills are in um, as they're accruing as we keep cleaning up and working. But um, there is a, a an earmark, Greg, $22.7 million statewide has to be lost in order for FEMA to step in. And IEMA is talking with every county within the state, trying to assist them with that. And um, we were talking about this. Uh, we have a daily call with IEMA. And quite frankly, I will tell you, um, IDOT, and IEMA met me on Sunday morning at 6 a.m. And these are, you know, state agencies and they're up at 6 a.m. working with me. So I cannot say enough good things about our governor and his agencies and how much um, they have helped us. But anyway, um, they are working with us in all the counties across the state to see if we get to that threshold to ask for federal relief. Um, so we are collecting data. We're turning in data as of today. All of the counties were supposed to get some data into IEMA today so they could start looking at that. Um, there are time frames for when you ask for a state emergency and a federal emergency. And so they're working with us on all of that. But they have been great partners with us, and we are anticipating asking for those things. Springfield Mayor Misty Busher with us, and greatly appreciate your time. Let's definitely connect again in the near future. Uh, and I think the Zoom thing might work, so you don't have to drive all the way out to Riverton uh, the next <laughs> time we uh, we chat. So greatly appreciate well, you taking the time. And I want to apologize for getting on late. My oh, no AB sweat. team is here because at 845, I have an interview with National Fox News about the duratio well, so go. they're here setting up for that and we were going to try to test you through that process and it didn't work so at least you were uh, patient with me and this worked on my ipad so thank you well and people will be able to watch you on uh, fox news a little bit later on so greatly appreciate you taking the time springfield sure. mayor misty busher be safe out there and we'll talk again soon thank you greg it is springfield's morning news on wmay stay tuned we've got much more coming up at 7 45 from culver's west on wabash culver's west on wabash is hiring for all shifts and all positions apply